Brother Gerard and Matteo. Written by Mary Kate Ellis. Performed by Kevin Davis. It was a hot, dry day under the Italian sun. Of course, Brother Gerard had no issue with this. After all, God made the sun, did he not? And the hot sun was not going to stop the good brother from his daily duties and his begging for alms. Equipped with a walking stick, a fraying straw sun hat, and his alms basket, he set out on the road that led to town and away from the peaceful quiet of the monastery. Each step with his worn-out sandals kicked up a bit of dust. He liked to watch, to look behind himself, to see if he had left a footprint, if the earth had been churned up enough to leave that little imprint. How interesting the earth truly was. He never ceased to marvel at it, at the simplest of things, such as the dust trodden beneath his own two feet. And what was more simple than dust? Wasn't he made of dust? And to dust he would return upon the time of his death. There was certainly something to be said about it. God made man from nothing, and yet how loved they are. If God could love the very dust of the earth that he had fashioned, then how much more did he love mankind? The very thought sent his heart soaring, and livened up his step as he neared the little village. It was not long after that he was met with a very familiar chorus of little voices, racing through the street haphazardly to meet him. It seemed that they were almost too eager to toss him their buttons and biscuits and allowance coins. Could he even call it begging if his basket was full within only seconds? A troubling thought indeed, but the charity of his little benefactors was more heartwarming than not. Stooping down with his basket, he greeted them with open arms. Good morning, children. Good morning, Pedro. I can't believe my eyes. Is it really that you've grown so much since I last saw you? He chuckled warmly as he waved a hand over the boy's blonde head, earning him a bashful look. Only a little, brother. Well, I do think it is quite a lot. He lowered his hand and ruffled the boy's hair before he received another chorus of voices, baiting him to measure me and look how I've grown. And as much as he wanted to, he could not ignore the distressed look that he was receiving from one of the older boys. So, straightening up, he lifted his now half-full basket and waved his hand. Matteo, would you mind walking with me today? Sure, brother, that's fine. Just Matteo and me. He cast a look around at the disappointed faces around him, and several loud sighs sounded before the children moped and turned and dragged their feet as they slowly sauntered away, back to the safety of their mother's skirts, until all that remained was him, his basket, and Matteo. He didn't have to say anything, he thought. No, no, he had begging to do, and so he motioned for the boy to walk alongside him as he made his way further into town. He stopped and knocked on the door. Would you have anything to spare in thy charity, Madame Mayello? The door creaked open moments later, only for a woman to drop in half of a loaf of bread that was clearly starting to harden, and several florets of broccoli. The door shut before he was even able to thank her. So, in his heart, Brother Gerard recommended the lady to God for her good charity, and he continued on to the next door. He knocked, waited, and when the door did not open, he went on to the next, and the next, and the next. Biscuits, coins, old bread, wilting lettuce, a few hard candies, one chocolate that was sure to melt, a tomato, a small blag of flour, and Matteo, trailing not very far away, still looking forlorn and very sad. How can you stand to do this, brother? Why don't you get upset when they close the door on your face? The first words that Matteo spoke were hardly shocking ones. Brother Gerard paused for a moment as he looked around and stepped into the shade of a balcony, where Matteo finally caught up and joined him. The way I see it, if they close the door on me, then perhaps they are on hard times. That, or it simply is not God's will that I should have any more. I have a lot already, see, Matteo. The brothers will be happy with this. Brother Agnello will be happy to have a tomato. 
After all, Brother Agnello did love his tomatoes. Being the gardener for the monastery, he liked to save the seeds from the fruits they ate, and he liked to plant them to see if God would allow them to sprout, especially the tomatoes. But the answer seemed only to trouble Matteo more, so Brother Gerard put his basket on the ground by his feet, and he reached up to pat the boy on the back. Why does that trouble you so, Matteo? I want to be more like you, Matteo said miserably, but I don't know if I could stand it, brother. Like me? To be a brother, Matteo? Yes. Ah, Brother Gerard had been in the boy's position once, though he supposed that he had always wanted to be a priest ever since he was a little boy. Could he stand the rigor of a religious vocation, to be like the brothers he saw constantly laboring? But God called him to where he needed to be, of course, after much prayer. Have you prayed about it, Matteo? Matteo looked up at him, eyes shining with tears that were threatening to spill, and he did make a pitiful sight. Brother Gerard had seen those eyes reflected in novices and postulants that feared that they were making the wrong choice by staying in the monastery, or leaving it. He had seen in the eyes of young ladies, wondering if they really should be getting married, wondering why they hadn't tried the convent before courting. To Brother Gerard, it was a look that pierced his own tender heart like a sword. What you must always do, Matteo, is God's will. Not Matteo's will, but God's. His will is what we always ought to want. Above all other things, we must strive to do what it pleases God for us to do. Brother Draw gently said, It may be a scary thing to do. And remember, my boy, that you are young, still in school. You have plenty of time to pray and ask God for his and the Holy Mother's guidance. She will never, never abandon you. Matteo did not look particularly comforted and Brother Gerard supposed he didn't blame the boy. It was an anxiety unique to each and every person, that of a vocation. But Matteo, he knew, was a good boy, and he needed to take his time, because God would make it clear to him when he was ready to know. But, Brother, I want to know. I feel so uncertain all of the time. And Mama, she means well. She really does, Brother. But she says when I'm out of school... I will get married to Arya, and I will work the farm for Papa. And I don't want to marry Arya or work the farm, and not when Francisco can, and, and Francisco wants to, brother. He's only one year younger than me, you know. Breathe, Matteo. Brother Gerard gently patted his back. Perhaps you could start with telling your mother what you feel led to do. Or, even before that, you could speak to Father Mancini. Get his opinion. Let him guide you. Let him help you. And pray, pray, pray. If he could take away Matteo's distress, he would. But he couldn't. No, not him, not upon himself. It was quite impossible. If only he could. But Matteo looked down at his shoes, sniffled, and he reached down to pick up the basket. He ran his fingers over the fraying wicker handle, looking inside at the wide array of contents, breathed in deeply, and as bravely as he could, he requested, May I stay with you today, until you're done, brother? Mama isn't expecting me home until this evening. I told her I was going to talk to you. Brother Gerard smiled, reaching out to take the basket. Of course, Matteo, so long as you don't get too hot. It was nice to have a companion to walk with, to kick up the dust with, and he was reminded of it as he walked back to the monastery with his full basket in tow and his single set of footsteps, though he had a feeling that Matteo would come to the monastery very soon. <laughs>